Hey, what's up guys? Sokli, and we'll be playing a Total War Warhammer 2 battle with myself finally fielding the Dark Elves. So in the front, I have two of these Dark Shards with shields. They are going to be absolutely paramount to the strategy here, which is going to be just shoot the Elven scum to smithereens. Uh, so we can go over the army compositions real quick. So myself, I have four of these Dark Shards, two of them with shields, they're so going to be pushing up the center. I have two Black Arc Corsairs, both of them with double chevrons. And then on either flank, the Black Guard of Nagron to guard against enemy Cav. In the rear, it's going to be the two other Dark Shards guarded by a Witch Elf unit. And then in the rear, a Cold One Dread Knight Force. I have my own uh, Dreadlord with sword and shield mounted on a Cold One in the center. And these are always very versatile, very glorious units to bring along. I also have on the flank some more mobile units to harass and perhaps hit some um, archers. So Dark Riders with shields on this flank, same thing on the other flank, and I actually brought a uh, Knight Assassin here. So this guy's pretty awesome, he's going to be in stealth. And the reason I brought him as well as this kind of light cav was I knew Indy would probably bring something along this line. Uh, it makes a lot of sense when you're playing against the Dark Elves to bring an anti-infantry build. So yeah, he's definitely gone that gone for complete infantry core of the White Lines of Straits. Very, very uh, expensive infantry, but are very good against uh, infantry themselves. Archers here as well to back them up to obviously try and negate my own Dark Shards. Um, and then he also brought two Dragon Princes on either flank, guarded by their own Lord. So on the left, it's going to be Tyrion here with his Flaming Sword. Uh, and these guys, we do have to look at them. This is every bit what I would hope um, Swan Knights from Lord of the Rings would look like. But yeah, nonetheless, looking very glorious. So this is a pretty cool build from him. Obviously, anti-infantry, he has extreme range. That's the advantage that the High Elves have over the Dark Elves. It's just more range. And then he has heavy, heavy infantry on the flank. And backed up by nobles that allows him to really punch through the side and i think he was expecting me to have a um uh, a death hag with with like the witch's brew um cauldron of blood sorry and be able to gang bang it with two lords and just destroy it and then pull out of that engagement um knowing that that was perhaps something that would happen i decided not to bring the death hag it was too much of a bait for his archers and lords so i went more for kind of a high infantry build and some mobility on the flanks um, in terms of the initial engagement, I know that Indy will have the initial heads up when it comes to range, and so I'm going to focus my efforts on just taking the first um, kind of engagement here with my two units with shields. I'm pulling up with some cavalry behind as well, and I'm just going to be doing a little bit of my stupid cheeky micro that I like to do. So for instance, up there he has some archers. I know that they're going to want to fire, they're probably on fire at will, and they're going to shoot into me and I'm just going to pull out of range. The range of the archers is just about here, so I um, get around most of those shots, take almost no damage, and I'm going to bait in, again, another volley, tempt him a little bit further, pull out, and then reach out. What I'm trying to get Indy to do is maybe um, shuffle around his archers, maybe turn off fire at will, just kind of mess with him uh, in the front. Uh, what I'm going to do here is pull up with both of my dark shards, and they're going to start to unload. I'm going to go after his... Uh, white lines of trace because I know that hey my guys have more armor and shields so I can deal with all of these incoming volleys and if I can get away with you know knocking out his expensive white lines of trace then my force can plow through this and these archers won't be able to run and hide anymore anyways these guys are a little bit exposed so Indy's gonna start to pull up with his dragon princes perhaps try and posture but let's take a look at these dark shards so I'm just at the extremity of Indy's range so as he's firing into me I'm going to pull out. It does expose my rear, but you can see most of the shots here landing just a bit short, so I'm being a bit cheeky there. I'm going to pull out, and again, most of those shots landing short, so I just did a little bit of a, a nibble at his guys here. On this front, I did pull up with my Dark Riders with shields. Um, to try and get at his archers, it almost works, but the Dragon Princes were here. He's going to fire into them, do some early damage. My own Dark Shards are going to pull up, and again, I'm going to just choose... Um, targets that aren't Indy's own archers, I want to go after his high value guys as opposed to the archers because, like I said, I know I can take these volleys. Down in the center, however, his archers were a little bit preoccupied with getting my dark shards and I get a nice charge with my dark riders against his archers and pull out uh, relatively scot-free. He's continuing to fire away at my guys, getting a bit pissed off that they're taking so much damage, but that's what you get when you upgrade with shields. And here they're going to fire into the dragon princes, who have finally caught up with my riders slaying them rather handedly but the assassin pops out of nowhere gets into these guys and slows down the charge meanwhile i have my own cold one knights getting a nice charge on the dragon princes here 
And so I'm pretty happy with how this exchange is going to go. Indy's going to try and precipitate something, but I get another nice strike with my Dark Riders against his archers. Cavalry's going to come back in. Over in this front, I know that his White Lines of Trace really want an engagement, but I'm not going to give Indy one. I'm just going to continue to pull out. Just wait for the time being and allow my guys to just fire. So I have my more exposed Dark Shards here without shields, and they're just going to fire away at his White Lines of Trace. Yes, that is going to leave some of my guys isolated on this front, but I think I'm okay against his Dragon Princes with a Cannon Assassin. I should be okay. Second Dragon Prince plus Tyrion is going to come in here, but I'm, you know, running around with some of my Dark Riders. So this is going to be absolutely obliterated. So these Cold One Knights are going to be um, basically trading their knights, uh, sorry, their lives dearly. But what is that getting for me? Well, it's gotten two, um, you know, both of his Lords and both of his Cavalry around here. That's going to open up an opportunity for me to move around the back. So one of my Dark Riders is going long to try and hit his archers, if need be. The other one is also going to wait for an opportunity. Meanwhile, what that does is it means that all his guys over here are now exposed. No Archer cover, no Cavalry cover. And so it allows me to just sit back and just kite, move back, uh, and fire into the rear. So these white lines are down to half health. This blob that's coming after my cavalry is also going to be uh, pretty heavily decimated. And he does pop all sorts of abilities against my guys to try and get to them to run. Let's get some nice shots of these dragon princes against everyone. So all of this is coming in. But take a look at this. Finally, my cavalry is going to get in. Tyrion does come and try... Or sorry, that's no a noble tries to save his guys. But nonetheless, I'm going to charge right through to his archers. Hit a couple of them. My guys are no doubt going to rout, but they've gotten a fair amount of kills and a lot of disruption. I'm going to come in and hit that same unit from the rear. Again, it's unprotected with another unit here of relatively light cavalry. And so I'm going to continue to run them down. Meanwhile, this cluster here has finally seen off my forces, but in the time being, they've taken a lot of hits. And my assassin here was forced to route, but he's still at pretty good health. So it looks like everyone is going to pull out of this engagement, knowing that there's way too much incoming uh, armor-piercing fire. White Lion's taking a lot of damage, and Indy here has taken so much damage that he's going to decide to pull back, reform the line, get out of range of my Dark Shards, and use the range advantage of his archers to get back at me. So that's a good move, but in the meantime, I'm going to try and punish that retreat by firing into his guys, and I'm going to make sure to keep the pressure on. My Cannon Assassin has come back from routing, which is excellent, because I'm going to have to use him to get into the rear lines, and I still have one of these Dark Shards pursuing. But now that Indy can wheel about, I'm going to try and disengage here, because I don't want to take a fight um, against massed archer fire like that, um, unless they have shields. So I'm going to try and pull up with my two Dark Shards with shields, and yeah, Indy's going to try and fire into this mass. And he also has some Dragon Princes also going to be pulling up. So i got to be uh, a little wary about that. But again, focusing fire on his White Lines of Trace. That is going to be my main focus here. Getting rid of his infantry blobs. And I'm not too worried about his cavalry. I have the Black Guard of Nagaron who can see them off fairly handedly. But look at all this concentrated archer fire. Finally going to crack one of my guys. But it's the one without shields. Meanwhile, over here, he gets a partial strike on my Dark Shards, but I'm going to intercept with the Black Guard of Nagron. Uh, a Prince Tyrion is also going to be here, and he nopes the fuck out, knowing that this is not a unit to mess with. Instead, he's going to want to send in his White Lines of Trace. I'm going to swap out my units, and instead of sending in the Black Guard against these guys, I'm going to try and send in some Black Heart Corsairs. But again, um, every time you have an opportunity here, you see I could have engaged with these guys, but in my eyes, there's no point in engaging if I have nearby archers who can just fire into this. Um, and give me more free kills as I pull out. On this front, I do have my Witch Elves kind of triggering these guys to go kind of rampage, which means they're going to be locked down, which is excellent for me. It means they won't be chasing after my archers. My archers can now fire away rather handedly. I have my Dreadlord here also on Overwatch, and then the nice thing here is my Assassin, Sneaky Sneaky, has gotten around the flank. We can watch this at retreat, and I have to pick my targets here. And now all of a sudden, my retreat here that I, where I was biding my time, I figured, hey, you know, Murderous Prowess has been popped. This is the best time, if any, to get back in. So the, these Black Heart Corsairs are going to double back. Looks like he had an attack order on the Black Guard of Nagron, which means I get a free charge against these guys, which is going to be excellent for me. The second uh, Corsair unit is going to get in here. They're going to do so much damage. I did get a last little volley here. Um, a Prince Tyrion is going to try and get after my Dreadlord. But he's going to go back and hit this blob. I'm now going to focus fire with my archers, but I do have a problem that a cavalry blob is moving in. Luckily, my Black Guard of Nagaron is going to come in. Archers are going to try and see them off, but it's going to be a nice interception to save my uh, archers on this side. However, it's not going to be enough to save the archers here. 
because he is going to be able to get through. But that's okay. I do kind of want to save these guys. I want to save the back of my infantry on this front. And so the if he's going after these two weaker dark shards, I'm not too worried about that. Like I said, I just want to guard the rear of my infantry, allow them to do what they're doing. On this front, I do also have my Dreadlord who helped kind of turn the tide here, pop some uh, morale negating blows against the enemy. And then also my K Knight Assassin pulled all the way into the midst. This archer turns around, tries to give him a slap in the face, realize is that it's just going to bounce off of him and now he's just going to smile and stab away. So that's pretty awesome. So he doesn't do too much damage but he's going to be there just to tie down the enemy um, and so that's tying down an entire archer unit. I'm going to pop um, Foe Seeker on my guy here just to get my uh, Dreadlord into the mix and I'm going to run a little bit further. Don't want to engage on the same archer unit. I'm going to pull around to the rear and then target this big blob here. There you go, hit two of them, and that should tie down his archer blob. Tyrion is going to be pulled back uh, to try and help. He's going to go after the K Knight Assassin, which is a pretty good idea, but this guy is a duelist, so the second I turn about against Tyrion, I should be able to do okay. Especially here, I've turned the Dreadlord around to help deal with uh, Tyrion as well. Meanwhile, on the back, the Dragon Princes are running amok into my archers, killing a fair amount of them, but the Black Guard of Nagarond is zoning them out effectively and keeping these archers alive. I've now torn through these white lines of trace, which means I have a free Black Guard of Nagarond. I'm going to try and kind of move up here and zone these guys out. Uh, Witch Elves are also going to pour into this fight. Or we do have a hell of a battle taking place here. Uh, Assassin's Trophy popped. Minus 27 melee defense and minus 26 melee attack. That's going to be awesome to help my guy out. So it looks like we're going to get a bit of a Lord Snipe. Snipe, excuse me. On this front, the battle is still underway. White Lions of Trace would probably beat these Black Arc Corsairs, who are much cheaper. But, like I said, I was getting a lot of early damage onto these guys with my archers. And then I waited for Murderous Paros to plop. Uh, and then I got a free charge in. So that is the thing that's tipping the tide. Uh, or, yeah, pick, taking, uh, um, you know. Putting things in my favor, let's just say that. And the nice thing I'm doing here, I'm just keeping my Black Guard of Nagron nearby, and all they're doing is just buying time, uh, offering a little bit of protection to these Dark Shards who can now just fire from the safety at those roving bands of cavalry. They're going to come and hit my two Black Guard Corsairs here and do damaging damage. Um, that's redundant. But yeah, they would have liked to be here a little bit sooner to save these White Lions. But yeah, they're going to get tons of kills. 133, they're probably going to get up to 200 at the end of this, but I still have some nice fire into the rear. These Dragon Princes are down to 10, so I may be able to route them. Down through the back, though, Indy does have some archers, and luckily I have enough mobility to be able to chase them down. Uh, my Lord is back here, and he was just making sure that Tyrion went off the battlefield. I had to make sure that was the case. Can't have a Lord coming back and um, giving hope to the Elves. In any case, Cavalry is going to be swooping around. They're going to get another one of my Dark Shards, so I have to be a bit careful. If Indy can end up rallying his archers and kiting me, that could be deadly. Um, but luckily, this Cannon Assassin is still holding strong, despite getting tons of shards into him. Look at this guy. He's got arrows sticking out the wazoo. And there he goes. He goes down, but that did buy me enough time to get the Dreadlord in here and bowl over those guys. Blackguard going to turn around try and catch him. Indy's doing a good job of hitting these Dark Shards. Not quite out of the game just yet, and having them alive is going to be key because look at this, they can fire straight into the back of those Dragon Princes, doing some more HP damage, and then also perhaps fire into some of his units that are coming back and have the potential to just continue picking away at my forces. Meanwhile over here, the Black Arc Corsairs have come back from routing, um, just out of sheer vengeance to try and kill some of these elves, but take a look at what's coming over. Let's take a look at this. Led by the prince himself with that spear off to his side. Looks absolutely brutal. These guys need to turn about, but it looks like it's going to be too late. And they're going to get it smacked down on the ground. Two full units here should be going down. These guys with 175. This uh, noble with 36 kills. Pretty solid across the board. But in the rear, the, um, the bread and butter of the army is going down. Another unit here absolutely obliterated. This force here may come back from routing, but I do have some Witch Elves who can come in and hopefully clean them up. And having this last, like I said, Soul Archer unit is excellent. It means that I can come in here, just guard them with my two Black Guard of Nagaron, and then slowly start to move in on his cav while protected and fire away at them. So at this point, I think things are going in my favor. The only thing that could perhaps go wrong would be if this Dreadlord gets isolated. So I do have to keep an eye on this cavalry. They could, you know, mass gank him, but uh, I'm pretty happy. And I got these guys on the edge of the map. They're going to be running off, so having this Dreadlord here was really awesome, and um, 
I was able to keep him at really high health. Usually that's something I don't have enough of a restraint to do in the battle. Usually uh, in most battles you see me waste my lords. I really need to get better at that because you can see late game just how important it is to have this little lord here. Just one unit, but it's doing so much damage uh, and some such utility keeping down these archers. If these guys were free, if this were uh, an end game battle with all his archers and cav against this blob, he would have focus fired my dark shards and then focus fired the weaker one and then done a, done a mass charge on the last guy and he may have actually won this battle. But like I said, a couple extra units in here is going to make the difference. Let's see how many kills these guys are up to. Dragon Prince is 223. That is crazy good. So definitely uh, living up to their reputation. And they have seized the high ground. If anything, this is a morale victory. This is where Dark Elves used to stand before. And so now they have the high ground. And, you know, as you should say in, in such situations, it's over, Anakin. There you go. Like I was talking about, those archers, if they had free reign against Black Guard of Nagron here with these halberds, don't really have that good missile defense. Uh, and so, yeah, they would, they would take their toll eventually. But luckily these guys are just about wavering, but they're going to stick in it to get a couple more volleys into the enemy. Let's go ahead and watch this as they start to land against these archers. And I don't believe these guys you have... Yeah, that's right. There's two different archer versions that you can get. One that's more um, upgraded. It has like padded armor or something. Not too much, but it might help you hold up a little bit better. Uh, but it is getting absolutely butchered by my guys. There is a second archer force that's coming in. A bunch of them. And Indy really wants to get rid of these dark shards. Uh, they've been doing a number on him. And so finally he does see them off. But not before their uh, their damage has been done. And <laughs> meanwhile over here this lord is like, oh my god. This is, this is helpless. Should we abandon the fight? Tyrion already has. Uh, but I think he's just summoning the courage. These guys are going to write notes on their, perhaps their shields or something, their wills, their last messages to their loved ones because they know that they're not getting out of this fight um, alive. But that's okay. They're, they're, they're going to get out of it at least with their glory intact and their honor intact. So here they come. Trying to circle around one of my isolated Black Guard of Nagaran. That's one of the things Indy could try and do. I've actually ended up getting separated. So he's going to have to go after them piecemeal. This guy is pretty low on health. So if Indy can get a nice little sandwich on me, that should be pretty good. What I'm going to do is I know he's lining up for a double strike. I'm going to take the noble hit in the back and I'm going to face this way. Try and brace against his dragon princes. So here they come. I should get, get that, get that uh, bracing bonus. And I believe I did. And so now in this uh, concentrated melee... These Dragon Princes are going to go down. They're beasts of models, but Black Guard are also pretty powerful. And here come my guys coming back around, especially with the Dreadlord here with high health. He can easily take on this Noble. Let's get some nice action shots at this point. I do have to say the High Elf versus Dark Elf matchup is a very, very fun one. Thematically, of course, uh, visually, it looks just stunning. Um, balance wise, um, I think we have come to the conclusion myself, Indy and Turin, that the High Elves are a bit underpowered. They don't have much in the way of ranged, ranged armor piercing, and so it's really hard for them to match up against um, other factions. Cavalry Department, they're pretty good with the Dragon Princes, but they need something with like a bonus versus large to deal with Rat Ogres and other uh, monstrous units like that. So in any case, uh, this is me fielding the Dark Elves for once and finally getting that big victory long awaited for against Indy Pride. So let's go ahead and end the replay and take a look at some of the final stats. I think I played that one out pretty well, cautiously chose my targets pretty well, and I think it was the early charges that I got with my cavalry. Uh, 43 and 5, knocking out some of his archers, getting down, just reducing their number, and that was kind of the meta play of this fight, was who could get the uh, archer advantage, because whoever gets that advantage can sit back and pick away at the enemy. So for me, the victory was owed to, of course, the Dark Art, dark Shards with Shields here, just absorbing so much fire from his archers, and then these guys coming in and cleaning house afterwards, somewhat. Then after that, as you saw, it kind of played out with a couple other units here. My infantry waiting until the optimum moment to countercharge these White Lions of Shrace, and then finally the Canada action, actually with 40 kills, really good. Uh, yes, it was against archer units, but he was actually against some of the uh, Dragon Princes early on in that fight. So he, he did some good work. These Dragon Princes, however, my god, 238, or 236, sorry, very impressive stuff. Tyrion, on the other hand, not super good. This is another thing we've come to the conclusion of. It seems like Tyrion is a, a bit too expensive for what he brings to the fight, um, and he could use some stat buffs. Um, but anyways, I'll cede that discussion to uh, people who are better at stat analysis, Turin and whatnot. But that's it for this battle. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more, and see you in the next one. Peace out.